I love designing skinny features. You can make them big and intricate with moving parts, you can weave them back and forth like DNA strands, or you can screw a 2x2 two two on a log and it'll still be just as challenging and fun. With that being said, there is one skinny I've been wanting to build for quite some time of the more intricate variety, and I've held off because I wasn't entirely sure how I would go about building it. The general idea is it will be floating on our pond, so it's wiggling and bobbing around while you try to make your way across, and the other part is, it's gotta be super long, like really long. With that rough idea in my head, I made a mock-up this week that actually turned out pretty dang sketchy, but it could work. So here's my first prototype. Honestly, like... Okay. I might have to screw the boards together. <laughs> Oh man, that's gonna be so hard. I'm coming back. Now most people might have seen this and thought, oh yeah, let's not go with that design. It doesn't work. <laughs> but not me. I decided these sketchy falling apart barrels were perfect for what I wanted. So I went ahead and got my lumber and everything together for the project. In total, I ended up getting 11 10-foot boards, 5 8-foot boards, and 20 ratchet straps for this. <laughs> and of course, to hold it all up, I still used 10 55-gallon barrels. Okay, so here is the plan. I'm going to take two of the 10-foot boards, butt them right up against each other, and take a 4-foot board and screw them to it. So they'll have a very sturdy uh, point where they're connecting at. And then at that connecting point, we're going to take two ratchet straps, cross them like an X over the barrel, and just ratchet strap it to the barrel. Hopefully that is enough to keep them in place, keep them from rolling around, um, but we'll see. With only one barrel attached, there was no way someone could keep balanced on it. But my hope was, the more sections I would add, the more stable it would become. So all I could really do is have faith and keep adding sections. This one is taking in water right around the cap. So I've got some thread tape here. I'm just gonna pop this lid out and we'll tape it up and then put it back in. Okay, hopefully that fixed it. All right, no, no more bubbles, awesome. looking like we're about three away from the edge out there. Um, I could bring it more to this side, but it's like, come on. 
honestly I think it's pretty dang sturdy but I haven't tried to walk on it yet so I'll know I'll know as soon as I go to walk on it if it's gonna be doable or not at this point I had two options go buy more boards and more barrels so we could go straight across the pond or I could just move the whole thing to the side a little bit so it could reach across the way it is you can probably guess at this point I definitely went with option two which still looks insane because it's 110 feet long <laughs> With it all finished up, it was time to finally test this. Dana is oddly talented at slacklining, so I figured she would be good to go first on foot to see if this thing was even doable. How's it feel so far? It, well, wiggling. How's it feel? Awful. No, don't do that. That's a recipe for disaster. You got it. As hard as Dana is making this look, she ended up doing it four times in a row without falling in. She blamed her shakiness on not wanting to get into a nasty pond, which is understandable. <laughs> Either way, the fact that she walked across this thing told me it is definitely going to be doable on a bike. So all that was left was to turn an old BMX bike into a pond shredder. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so I just got back from the store and I picked up two things. I picked up this, a foam noodle, and some duct tape. Because we are going to deck out this old BMX bike. What we're gonna do here is just take this and then uh, we'll just measure each section out like that. Take my pocket knife, cut them, and stick them on there. Sadly, I couldn't ride my Trid ZZ on the skinny because I simply didn't want to ruin it. <laughs> it's too nice a bike, but having to ride a BMX was going to add another layer of difficulty to this thing that I already felt was impossible. So, since I knew I was going to be flopping in the water a million times, I invited Dave over to try it out with me. Are you about to try it? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that was quick. After taking an insane beating from the floating skinny, we decided to call it for the day, with us both only making it 50 feet across, which isn't even halfway. Now let me remind you, Dave is an incredible technical rider. He sent my teeter-totter skinny the very first go without even looking at it, and that thing is extremely hard. Made it. So at this point, my thought was, I'm probably not going to get across this, but can I at least get further than halfway? So the next morning, I set out with determination to kick this thing's butt. And let me tell you, I was not the one who did the butt kicking. with this feature is you cannot use your brakes at all. It's always slippery, it's always muddy, it's always bobbing and wiggling, and anytime you try to come in with speed and confidence, something like this happens to you. Oh! 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 That hurt my balls pretty bad. Now even though I pretty much got smacked across my entire body by a 10 foot board, I kept trying. I figured with some stroke of random luck, I might get really far, and happily, I can say that that happened. Now, I didn't get all the way across, but I did eventually make it to 70 feet. Oh. 
This is by far the hardest tech feature I have ever ridden, mainly because it felt more like luck than skill any time that you got some distance. I even went out for a third day for a couple hours and it just produced the same results as the previous days. I imagine with lots and lots of time, you could eventually get across this thing with a good amount of luck, but over these three days, I became so beaten and bruised that I was ready to accept the record of 70 feet. <laughs> and that's when I came up with this fun idea. What if this feature becomes some sort of challenge for other YouTubers? Who do you guys think could actually ride this thing? Let me know in the comments below, and maybe we'll see about getting them out here to give it a go. In the meantime, I got Dana and Dave to sign their personal records on a piece of duct tape. Then I took it out and stuck it on the feature. While I got Dave's signature, he showed me his battle scar from this, and Jeez. yeah, it's Look no joke. Thing. Yep. <laughs> this is by far the strangest feature I have ever made, but it's definitely not the last you'll see of it. I imagine somebody will eventually get across it, right? Either way, thank you guys so much for watching this week. A huge thank you to my patrons for supporting me while I build these ridiculously stupid things. <laughs> it means a lot. Let's build some more stuff next week, and I'll see you then.